Suspension Assembly It is not just a linkage connecting the wheels to the frame with springs and dampers, nor it just allows the wheels to go up and down. The whole vehicle dynamics like steering effort, understeer and oversteer control, steering feedback, traction, wheel contact while cornering, body roll, acceleration deceleration effects and adverse road condition effects on the car etc are decided by the suspension linkage used in your car. In the last two videos of the suspension series, we talked about the suspension spring types and shock absorber types. In this one, let's untangle the suspension assemblies. No one on the internet has explained it in detail as required, so here's our try. Rather than just jumping into the type of suspension assemblies and comparing them by advantages and disadvantages, we'll first see the vehicle dynamics required in different scenarios, further to which we'll see how each suspension assembly satisfy those requirements. When there is a speed breaker, both wheels should go up together. In dips, both wheels should come down together. In case of a pothole on just one side, the wheel should go down like this, so that both wheels maintain good road contact. And it is same when one wheel goes over a bump. When the car turns, the car's body tilts around its CG, called body roll. The wheels should stay in contact with the road like this. So relative to the car's body, the expected wheel position is with changed camber angle and different suspension length. So it's ideal for suspension assembly to change the wheel camber around the CG as pivot and adjust to desired length to maintain good wheel contact while turning. There are few more things that a suspension should do while turning. Like for long wheelbase cars, at sharp cornering, the rear set of wheels should turn such that the turning radius decreases. By that you get good handling and easier turning of the car. Some suspension assemblies to discuss further have such geometries that do it. But this same effect is undesirable in short wheelbase cars as it may lead to oversteer. So assembly of short cars with shorter wheelbase are designed such that the rear set of wheels don't lean in any direction while you make a turn. There are three types of suspension assemblies, dependent, semi-dependent and independent. In the dependent suspension, the effect of one wheel affects the position of the other paired wheel. There is rigid axle suspension with either coil spring or leaf spring. The second is semi-independent suspension. The only type of it worth knowing is torsion beam suspension. Third is independent suspension, in which the position of one wheel doesn't affect the others. Its main types are MacPherson stud, double wishbone suspension, swing arm suspension, swing axle suspension, and multi-link suspension with 3, 4, or 5 links. First, let's see rigid axle suspension. Here, an axle is connected to the frame by either leaf or coil springs. On speed breakers and in dips, all assembly moves together. It's fine till that. The problem arises on a single sided pothole and bumps as the camber changes and the contact patch of both tire get reduced. On big bumps, the vehicle tilts in one direction. That isn't very comfortable experience to be in. The rigid axle suspension is more robust and has benefits like the assembly when fitted on driving wheels can handle high horsepower as there are no CVs connecting them. The power from the differential directly goes to the wheels. This rigid axle suspension is preferably used for heavy cargo vehicles having high horsepower and also no comfort requirement. Next is semi-dependent suspension, which is torsion beam suspension. A beam is pivoted to a frame and has a swing arm for each wheel. So it is like a swing arm suspension connected with torsion bar, preferably near the pivot. The suspension has coil springs. So on bumps and potholes, the wheel moves up and down, like a swing arm, while torsion beam resists that. Torsion beam does two things. One, it increases the stiffness of the suspension. Two, it gives combined effect of rigid axle and independent suspension. The assembly fixes due to the bumps. This not only pushes the assembly up and down, but also gives some camber change, as in rigid axle suspension. That is helpful while making a turn. The assembly also being relatively flat allows for more cabin space for passengers. This suspension assembly is widely used as rear suspension of cars. Now let's see complete independent suspension. First is MacPherson stud. The construction is simple like this. 
it consumes more vertical space than horizontal. There is little camber change due to up and down moment. It is widely used as front suspension of front engine front wheel drive cars as it gives lot of space to fit engine and transmission here. Its construction is simple and cost effective. This is not generally used in sports cars as it has low bonnet so vertical assemblies don't suit there. Plus there is less control to the engineer on camber while designing. So camber performance cannot be optimized as wanted. But some cars like Porsche have McPherson strut as front suspension to give cargo space in front. And its assembly travel is also very less so sometimes McPherson strut can be used in sports car even though it's never the first choice. This is how the McPherson strut performs in different conditions. One disadvantage of McPherson strut is that the pivot of steering remains substantially offset to the center of the tire. So the wheel scrubs more and handling takes more effort. Narrower the tire, less the offset becomes. So regular cars don't face much of this issue, but wider tires does. What's more preferable in sports car is double wishbone suspension, whose construction is like this, substantially flat and it can be made even flat. So the nose of the car can be low. That is great for aerodynamics. Its construction is like parallelogram. The links make the wheel go straight up and down with no camber change. Whereas by shortening the upper arms, the desired camber change effect can be brought. So designer get more freedom to adjust the vehicle dynamics by shortening the arm length, which isn't possible in McPherson struts. The wishbone becomes more spread out and gives more robustness to the assembly. With bigger rims and wide tires, it becomes easier to put the assembly in the wheel and have pivots near to the tire center. So the scrubbing issue as in McPherson strut can be mitigated. This is how a double wishbone assembly works in different scenarios. Double wishbone is used in both front and rear of the car. Next is swing arm that is similar to bike suspension system. The wheelbase changes due to compression of the suspension. Its drawback is it tends to squats due to acceleration and braking. This is how a swing arm works in different conditions. Next is swing axle. This is similar to a swing arm but in transverse layout. The camber changes and the track also changes while the wheelbase remains constant. With compression, camber changes too much and the tire contact is also not very good. But it is good and cheap way of having suspension in rear wheel drive vehicles like these ones. If you enjoyed the video make sure you hit the like button, subscribe the channel if you haven't yet and hit the notification bell to get notified for future updates. As of for now I'm signing off, see you guys in the next one.